Shakespeare students and Shakespeare lovers, whoever's watching this and wanting to learn a little bit more about the films on Hamlet, or at least my take on them, right? Um, this is the video about the videos or the little clip about the clips. Um, I want to offer you, hopefully in 10 minutes or so, just a few thoughts on my recommendations for the films, but also some caveats, some warnings, or just even a heads up about what you're going to get. Um, and so for one of our culminating assignments for this class is I want you to watch one of the versions of Hamlet that's out there. And I want you to do it without me stopping it all the time or talking about it, all that kind of stuff, right? And, uh, and so I'm going to offer you a few thoughts and maybe a little journey through the film versions. Now, my mom would definitely recommend the Laurence Olivier black and white, I think it's 1960 whatever film. And it's great actually. It's um, really well done. It's Laurence Olivier. You got the black and white feel and uh, it definitely gives you Hamlet, right? Um, and so don't just think, oh, that's old and black and white, no good. It's great. I've had several students watch it and many of them have appreciated it. Now, some of them haven't because it's not modern Hollywood filmmaking. Um, you got to decide what you're going to do, but I just want to remind you that that one is available, right? Now, there, if you just Google Hamlet, you'll find lots of different films available. And if you try to YouTube search, which many of my students did, try and find free ones or ones that are out there, there are some, and I will get to that in a second. Um, but a lot of them are like phone shots of someone in a theater or just ones that aren't done that well. And I will offer you this as your teacher two minutes into this little video on the videos. I personally believe that bad Shakespeare is worse than no Shakespeare. <laughs> Right. Um, I take my own children to see good Shakespeare because great Shakespeare, good Shakespeare is awesome. It's the best stuff. It's some of the best storytelling ever. That being said, like I just said, bad Shakespeare kind of ruins Shakespeare. And it's, it's not just like you watched a crummy film or a crummy story. You're going to feel like you wasted your time or you're going to walk away confused or frustrated. Right. Um, and so I've seen lots of different Shakespeare in lots of different venues on film and live and even in a, a park, right? Um, and so just to throw that out there, and uh, my children, 6, 10, you know, all the way through, and even myself, I have loved great Shakespeare at any age. So just to throw that out there, you want to find good Shakespeare. Laurence Olivier is good, right? Um, a lot of what you'll find out there isn't. So let me throw a few other thoughts for you. When I was in high school, 1991, I think, Mel Gibson, young Mel Gibson, plays Hamlet. And you also got some other great actors and actresses in here. Ian Holm, which is Bilbo from The Hobbit, and Helena Bonham Carter, and Glenn Close. So this is, this is stacked. It's well done. You do need to know, right, that Franco Zeffirelli isn't giving you Shakespeare's play. Laura, you know, Franco Zeffirelli is giving you the story of the character of Hamlet. I mean, we lose Fortinbras completely in this story, chopped off the front and the back, which I think is really a big deal. Um, we, we shift some things around, and he chops a bunch of important speeches, I think. We don't get let be, which, ah! <laughs> I mean, to be or not to be is a big deal, but let be at the end is like the big deal for this play in some regards. So you have to take it for what it's worth. But it's short, it's sweet, it's Mel Gibson, it's uh, action-packed, and Mel does a great, if I can call him Mel, he does a great job with a very engaging and compelling Hamlet. It won a whole bunch of awards for music and costuming and setting and adapt adaptation. So go for it. It's rated PG. So you can pretty much just slide this in and watch it with whoever you'd like to. All right. Um, there you go. That's my thoughts. If you don't know which one to pick, for most of you, you probably want to go with this one. Not everybody. Not everybody. But many of you will just want to throw this one in. To counter that, five years later, I think, um, we've got Kenneth Branagh, who does his version of Hamlet. And I think to kind of balance out Franco Zeffirelli's very short, focused story of the character of Hamlet, we now have 
um, Kenneth Branagh, who's done several Shakespeare films at this point, and so has a bigger budget, and he stacks the cast. You can look at this, right? It's uh, Billy Crystal, Gerard Depardieu, Derek Jacobi, Robin Williams, Kate Winslet, stacks the cast. It's filmed on location at this amazing castle house thing, right? So that's incredible, and it is well done. Um, they put a lot into it. I will tell you, it is, I think, four hours and 20 minutes long. So it is the entire story of Hamlet. Um, actually, he took the first folio and the second folio and did every line, and he actually tried to do them pretty much in order. <laughs> so you will get Shakespeare's play when watching this. And I think Brano does a really good job. Some of you really like him as a director and actor. I think he does a really good job with interpreting Hamlet and his moodiness and the journey that Hamlet is on. I'll give you a couple things here. It's rated PG-13, but that's really misleading. Um, I think I said in my other video, and I say it every time in class, and I have my post-it note right here, skip chapter 9, particularly minute 32 to 34. All right? Like, that that's a big deal, um, especially personally for lots of reasons, but there is a huge sex scene put in here between Hamlet and Ophelia, buns and boobs and nakedness, and it's it's not appropriate. Um, I think I'll throw this out there. I, I think Kenneth Branagh is trying to do something with interpretation, which could potentially be there for Hamlet and Ophelia, but actually, I'm just going to say it, I don't think so. Hamlet is super frustrated with all the sexuality between Claudius and his mom. Right? I mean, he's talking within a month, right? In the incestuous sheets. And uh, there's a sexuality theme throughout all of this about the abuse and inappropriate sexual behavior that Hamlet sees in the adults. And I really think that he and Ophelia are waiting till they get married, which is part of Ophelia's madness when she says, and thou hast not come to my bed. Like, I've been waiting waiting until we get married for us to be able to experience that and uh, it ain't, it's not going to happen right so I think that's my take on that uh, Brano has a few lines where in that same speech that Ophelia just gave where he can talk about thou has tumbled me but I remember she's losing it there during that and I think she's singing that song as part of her mourning he puts it in, I personally think he put it in because he can, um, because it gets a certain type of viewers, and more people will watch it because it's in there. Uh, bad move, all right? You need to know about that? Yeah, I spent about two minutes talking about it because it's a pretty big deal interpretation-wise on Hamlet and Ophelia's character and relationship, but also because I don't want that for my students. I don't want you guys to have to deal with that in the middle of a play. There you go on the Brownow version. Um, Hamlet 2000, all right? So this is Ethan Hawke uh, doing his best to give us a modern interpretation of Hamlet. It came out in 2000. It's rated R, so keep that in mind. I There's plenty of reasons why, but um, I think they made it R because they wanted to target a certain type of audience to watch it because, oh, it's, rated, it's R, Hamlet. Um, just to give you a taste here, it took me three times to get through this video. I really struggled, honestly. I think the concept is cool. Let's make Denmark a corporation. Let's set this in a modern setting. Let's try to make it applicable and relevant to a modern audience. Let's keep the intensity of the characters and the plots and the themes and even the language, even though it's set in this corporate position. It didn't work for me. Um, I know that they're like the Romeo and Juliet version totally worked for me. I loved how they did that with the modern setting and the modern language, the old language, modern setting, creative interpretation. This one I struggled with. That being said, all right, Julia Stiles as Hamlet, I think is great. And there are a couple of scenes in here, especially the breakup scene with Hamlet and Ophelia and Julia Stiles. I think that I think that was fantastic. And um, I also think, <laughs> right, um, oh, what's his name? I'm drawing a blank. But our Polonius in here is fantastic. So take it or leave it. Some of you will love it. Um, most of my students don't, honestly, and I didn't. But there it is. You can watch it if you want to. This last one is great. This is 2010, all right? And this is David Tennant and Patrick Stewart. 
And uh, David Tennant and Hamlet as Hamlet is awesome. This is the Royal Shakespeare Company, and they give the story of Hamlet. It's chopped up, moved around. The scenes are cut and paste. So you have to expect that going into it. And it's also a modern interpretation or modern adaptation. It's not set in Elizabethan, well, Elizabethan Denmark. But um, I want you to consider this. This is something uniquely done where they put cameras in a live theater and it was acted live in a theater, but then they went behind the scenes of the theater and down in the cellar of the theater and outside the theater. So they kept that theater feel as though you were sitting in a seat in a theater, but they also kind of messed around with that a little bit. And they have like uh, the spying stuff is all done with security cameras, which is really clever. So I think many of you will really like this version. One quick note, Ophelia rips off her shirt so she's running around in a bra. I want you to be aware of that before you see it. On, on screen, it's towards the end when she's starting to go insane. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, but I just want to throw this out there. This is a great option as well. Many of you will like it. Um, I'm not even sure if there is a rating. Oh, it's rated PG. I had to look that up. It's rated PG, so it's relatively pretty safe. All right, David Tennant, so great. Now, uh, my journey with Hamlet, I've had some recommendations. In 2014, there is a version by Peter Brook. If you were to type this into YouTube and just go Peter Brook Hamlet or Hamlet Peter Brook, it'll pop right up. It's right there. Um, it's just over two hours long. It is a made-for-TV movie that was done in 2002 by Peter Brook. I was recommended this by Professor Mark Lewis at Wheaton College, who is a Shakespeare aficionado. He's been a professional actor. He does Shakespeare in the Park in Wheaton, which is good Shakespeare, right? Always go if you get a chance. My kids and I, we love it. And we've loved it ever since he's been doing it. Um, and he is a wonderful Shakespeare professor. Um, he recommended that to me, and I just checked it out. And by the way, the assignment for this is to, you know, watch a Hamlet a version of Hamlet and write a professional movie review. Well, I watched some of it and then looked up some movie reviews, the New York Times review and the Guardian review and the IMBD review. Yeah, it was great to read the reviews. And then I started it, checked out some reviews, went back and I ended up just watching it. It's so well done. So it's 2002, but came out in 2014 on YouTube, made for TV movie. I don't think it's rated. And uh, I really enjoyed it. The reviews specifically speak to the fact that it's pared down, which Peter Brook is a famous director and a Shakespeare guy. Um, he, uh, he tried to trim it down so there's not a lot of extra stuff so we can really catch the story and intentionally did that. And I saw this happen by focusing on the characters and the language and an international cast, which I love, you really get some more depth that you might lose or not be able to dig into because of other things that might be potentially even distracting you. Um, it also gives us a taste of original Shakespeare, which would have been pared down. Minor props, some great costumes in the globe, right? Live in the middle of the afternoon, right? Hopefully on a sunny day. All right, there you go. Um, I said it was going to be 10, and now we're pushing 13 and a half, 14 minutes. I really hope you enjoy your journey through Hamlet. And remember, as your teacher, we've gone through Twelfth Night, focusing on story. We've gone through Henry V, focusing on language. And now with Hamlet, I want you to experience and, and enjoy um, – watching character development with Hamlet, and any of these movies will give you that, right? You get to see a character grow and change along with so many other characters through the story of Hamlet. And uh, as we watch characters develop and grow, we get to consider our own character development in, in the story that we are in, right? And uh, I want you to consider marked and missed epiphanies. There are many epiphanies, particularly Hamlet right as he's entering the final duel, talking with his best buddy Horatio. There's special fall, sorry, there's special providence in the fall of a sparrow, right? The readiness is all. And he even says, let be. This is an epiphany moment for Hamlet on his journey, coming off of the pirates and act four. So I really want you to consider looking for missed opportunities, maybe with Ophelia or others, um, maybe with 
Our Uncle Claude and his some of his missed epiphanies. Mom with some of her wake up moments. Um, yeah, it's great. Enjoy it. I bless you. Have fun. And have fun writing your own personal movie review to the one that you watch. I got to end with this. I know some of you are wondering, well, can I just watch Lion King and count that? Well, definitely watch Lion King and know that it's based off of Hamlet, but it's not Hamlet. It's Lion King. <laughs> All right. Take care and uh, long live Shakespeare. Let be.